We have a lot to talk about tonight, and um, I want to sort of talk bigger picture, and then we'll get a lot more granular. And so sort of an open-ended question to begin with, and I'll, I'll start with Mark. Um, have we reached a true level of stability, or is this just the calm before the storm? Has the hurricane passed, or are we in the, uh, the center of the storm and the winds are going to blow again? Mark? Well, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're, we're Manhattan-centric uh, as we are in, in response to that question, because I think there's, uh, there's a lot of ills out there uh, nationally in a lot of uh, CBD markets. Um, New York, which kind of led um, the, uh, the sector in to... Uh, uh, to, to, to turmoil two, two and a half years ago, I believe is going to and is now leading the way out. Um, so, I mean, certainly all the different metrics that we track um, and that we can use to forecast what we think is going to be happening over the next year or two, most of those are turning positive, but for rental levels, which are clearly uh, right at the bottom right now. But in terms of um, uh, revenues of our tenants, in terms of who's hiring, who's looking at expanding, who's looking at trying to get in now to bottom tick the market in terms of rent for fear that over the next year, two, or three, they're going to miss the market and rents will start running away from them. Uh, in terms of uh, jobless list uh, claims in the office sector, which I think you're going to see moderate substantially in Q1 and Q2, um, all those things together uh, lead us to believe that fundamentally the worst is behind us and that things are going to improve, hopefully uh, more substantially than maybe uh, people think. I, you know, we look back over the past three or four downturns and the more severe the downturn, the more severe the uh, upturn. And I do think that sitting here today and saying, you know, God, how can rents return to uh, levels that are much more economic than today and how can pricing return to levels that are much more economic today. I don't think we were saying anything that much different in 01, 02, 03, uh, 98, early 90s. And therefore, I'm pretty emboldened that Manhattan uh, is certainly retains its attraction to be a major, uh, the major and most important financial and business center in the country. I think tenants uh, are looking at these rents today opportunistically, and they're going to be just infilling uh, all the vacancy that has occurred predominantly through sublet space, but some direct space. And while it's, it's, uh, uh, it's hard to sit here and say that within the next year or two, things will be measurably be better, um, I don't think we're uh, sitting at a point in time where we're going to be looking a year or two from now with things uh, worse than they are now. I'd be very surprised. And certainly, we're tailoring our strategy uh, towards an improving market. And that means we're going to be net investors again. Bill, you have a more of a global perspective, given your funds investment globally. Are we in the calm before the storm, or are these tidal waves ready to hit us again? <clears throat> Mark, thank you for the optimistic uh, remarks. Um, without Facetelli and Silverstein I, here, I yeah, think. Yeah, without, I was going to call you, thank you very much, Larry Silverstein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, someone had to do it. Uh, well, it, well, right now, we're still in the storm, but maybe perhaps we're in the calm of the storm, and you know, when the eye goes through of a storm, sometimes you have a calm right around it. Having said that, um, I, I think on a global basis, things are pretty similar. They're, they differ from a little bit from country to country, but the conditions of, uh, of lack of liquidity, of, um, of, of, of properties being down anywhere from 25 to 75 percent in value and rents being down 40 percent plus or minus, depending what you're looking at, you know, is, is a global infection. Um, it affects New York, it affects uh, Mumbai, uh, it affects uh, London, it affects uh, any place that you go. But, you know, having said that, um, I think that in parts of the United States and in New York and London and other places, uh, rents uh, have adjusted and for the moment, uh, don't seem to be headed down much further. You may have another 10%. Cap rates have adjusted, uh, and they, in, at the present time, um, are not uh, moving tremendously, but there's been a big adjustment in both, where it's knocked property values uh, out from under, and where uh, a, a tremendous amount of properties are valued 
at much less than the uh, first mortgage. And a lot of these properties have a lot more than a first mortgage. So where we, the question is, are we, uh, you know, are we looking to better times? And the real question, the real, the answer to this can only be um, answered in the fact that what bothers me and worries me is that there has not been the cleansing of the system. Um, the, there are very few transactions, and there are so many properties underwater, and there's so much hide the ball, and there's so much extend and, and pretend, um, that, um, you know, that, that we, we may not have seen the worst. Um, because right now the FDIC is, uh, and the feds are allowing all of the institutions um, to redo the loans or to extend the loans without, without classifying them as high risk, hoping that over a four to six quarter period that the banks can write down these loans little by little and hopefully the loans have stabilized, and once they get the loans written down on their books, they're just gonna get rid of them. So this is a, a very, very interesting period, but I don't think we can say that we, um, that we are fully stabilized until transactions come back, until capital comes into the market, some of which is on the sidelines today. Uh, the thing we have to do to get the economy going, for sure, is to create jobs. The creation of jobs will fill the office buildings, people will be more confident in the shop, and we need today, we need the consumer um, to be optimistic rather than pessimistic. The consumer does not have yet the proper confidence. So, I mean, I, I've repeated this a few times, but I think that the consumer needs four things before he or she is confident enough to go out and start spending, and that starts in a, in a consumer-led economy, that starts the ball going again. Um, they, have to be, they have to be optimistic that they will not lose their job. Uh, they're not that, there yet. They have to feel that their home prices have stabilized and are heading up and uh, Billy Rudin and I were listening to an economist the other day who said that 25 of the 50 uh, metropolitan markets, there have been little tick ups um, uh, in the prices of housing. So there's at least a stabilization in housing and that's good. Uh, the third thing is the consumer's gotta have a better access to credit. They don't, credit is very tight. And the fourth, which is encouraging, is that well, as they look at their 401ks every month, that they look positive, and that's positive. So we're going in the right direction. We're getting there with a tremendous amount of uncertainty. Um, but I guess the best we can say is that um, we have not, it is possible that we could have a mass dumping at one, po at one point, and the stabilization that we say, see today can temporarily be very destabilized as prices bounce down before they bounce up? Well, I think as far as New York City goes, I think what's the most surprising thing of, of this recession is how well New York has done. Uh, other than New York, other than Washington, D.C., New York has really weathered this storm better than any other city in the United States, which, which you know, is good today when you look at New York. The question is, you know, what dark clouds hang over New York City. Um, and to me, there's a lot of dark clouds that are over New York City when you look at the future of, uh, of New York City. Uh, and, and from more of a macro type of approach, is that until we really change our politics in New York City, um, when we have a legislature that spends until, the, until, they, uh, until we're going to run out of money, uh, changes, uh, we're not going to really have a great... Uh, deal of, 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 of confidence in the business uh, community uh, in New York. Um, and I think that exists both uh, in uh, Albany as well as the city council in New York. Um, so I think that doesn't bode well for long-term New York and for the, uh, for the real estate uh, economy in New York. In terms of the country, I feel that while 
uh, things have stabilized, uh, and I think prices, uh, I know we deal mostly in apartments. I think the, the, uh, the market there has, has held up very well. Um, recognizing that uh, anything in real estate is really a, a byproduct and it's a function of jobs. Uh, but today, uh, you know, our vacancies uh, in our building are probably about 4% today. Our prices are down anywhere from 15 to 20% from the highs. Um, but with 4% vacancy, uh, you can start to see rents uh, going up uh, in, in the <clears throat> probably the short term. Uh, assuming there's not another double dip in the uh, economy, and uh, which, which is a really, to me, there's a real concern there of what might happen in, in the spring. Uh, we still have major issues with the housing sector. Uh, we haven't really solved the issues there. Uh, we've put some band-aids on it. Uh, you'll have the expiration of the uh, uh, home buyer credit, uh, and once you start seeing interest rates uh, going up you're gonna find out what really happens with all these foreclosures that are really on the books. And this is across the country, and it will have some bearing in New York. Um, and also, you have the real problem that we really haven't tackled and nobody has the answer for, is what you're gonna do with all the commercial uh, mortgage debt that will be coming due over the next uh, three to five years. And uh, th that's really uh, a, a major problem that I don't think anybody has really kind of figured out how you really are gonna deal with it. Um, and that will affect prices in New York, and it will also affect, it will certainly affect values, as you well know. And, uh, but with the lack of supply and, and New York still being the city of choice for most people uh, coming out of school and, we're, and business is still healthy, uh, I think New York will continue to do well from that standpoint. I don't know how it will affect values, but I think rents, uh, as long as uh, we don't have a ma another major uh, downturn, uh, will continue to rise. I, I think we're, I, I think we're definitely not the calm before the storm. We've been through the storm. Uh, if anybody has, you know, you know read uh, Too Big to Fail or listened to Jamie Dimon, I mean, that weekend in September, we were right on the edge. And I think, uh, you know, we were here a year ago and trying to predict what, what's going to happen. And what I've learned is none of us are that smart to really know you know, what's going to happen, let alone, you know, uh, a, a week from now, but three or four months from now. Because if we were sitting here in, say, February of, of this year, uh, none of us could have predicted two months later that the stock market would be rebounding, that, uh, you know, that there would be, uh, uh, you know, offerings from uh, S.L. Green and Simons and, and Taubman and Vernado of billions of dollars of, of uh, of uh, equity and that that money would be raised and that their stocks who got pummeled would come back uh, in, a, uh, in a, you know, very uh, uh, positive way, you know, a few months later. So, you know, I think we're, we've gone through a tremendous uh, trauma and we're, we're on the way to, to recover. Now, how long does it take for us to get back to uh, full value? I think it, that's a long road, but we're definitely in a much better position uh, than we when we could have all thought we would be a year ago, uh, you know, last you know, uh, last uh, you know, November or December, um, because we had no activity, we had nobody calling, nobody looking at space. Our vacancies in our apartment buildings went from two percent to five percent, literally, uh, you know, almost overnight. As uh, particularly the smaller apartments, the young people were losing their jobs, and now that's come back. We're back to four percent. Um, you know, our rents are down, probably the same. Uh, levels, but uh, we're seeing activity on our commercial space. We're making deals. You know, we're mark to market uh, on our rents, uh, but people are looking and you know taking advantage of you know tremendous uh, you know opportunities uh, that are created by owners who've got the capital to put back into their building. Uh, there, there's a lot of activity in the marketplace. There's a, a significant renewal, not in one of our buildings, but on the west side with a major law firm that will be announced soon. Uh, and uh, you know, I know of other deals that are that are out there. So I, I think we're you know we're, there's still choppy waters. And as uh, Chairman Bernanke said the other day uh, in his speech, you know there are definitely headwinds, but we're I think on a road to recovery. We've